Hello. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this recording of Generation Rx presented by the Prevention Department at the Center for Alcohol and Drug Services. I'm Ellie, one of the prevention specialists and will be your presenter today. You may be asking yourself, what is Generation Rx? Generation Rx has two primary connotations. First, there is a historical connotation taken from Greg Christer's book, Generation Rx, How Prescription Drugs Are Altering American Lives, Minds, and Bodies. In this book, Greg describes how we have become a drug-taking society where we use prescription medications at unprecedented rates and their use has become normalized in our culture. Thus, we are Generation Rx. All of us from the very young to the very old. The second connotation speaks to an educational initiative developed by the, uh, in a partnership between the Ohio State University College of Pharmacy and the Cardinal Health Foundation. This initiative educates the public, or Generation Rx, about how to safely use prescription medications in an effort to prevent their misuse. Generation Rx focuses on teaching safe medication practices for life. The agenda for today's program includes three items. To give context, we'll begin by discussing the scope, causes, and consequences of misusing prescription drugs. We then want to focus on how you as an individual can prevent the misuse of prescription drugs. We'll do that by identifying four key messages for safe medication practices, and to end by discussing how you can take action at home or in your community to educate others about the information you've learned today. Let's begin by establishing the beneficial impact of prescription medications. Prescription medications can help us lead longer and healthier lives when used under the supervision of a healthcare professional. Our life expectancy is the longest in history and people are now able to live with many diseases that once were fatal. We are preventing or curing many illnesses and relieving troublesome symptoms in part because of prescription medications. But these powerful, sometimes life-saving medications, helpful when used as directed by your healthcare professionals, can also be harmful, especially when misused. This is one of our most important messages. It is very important to only use medications as directed by your healthcare professionals who will monitor your care and help you avoid harmful effects. Before we move forward, let's consider this question. How do we define prescription drug misuse? Here are three scenarios. Scenario one, a patient prescribed an opioid pain medication is in severe pain. The patient takes more than instructed to manage their pain. Scenario two, a patient shares their medication with a friend or family member. Scenario three, a patient mixes their prescription medication with alcohol to elicit a pleasurable effect. Which scenario do you think depicts prescription drug misuse? If you said all three, you are correct. Each scenario depicts prescription drug misuse. Many people may believe that scenario three is the only situation depicting misuse, as the individual appears to be misusing the prescription medication by mixing it with alcohol perhaps with the purpose to escape or to elicit a pleasurable effect. However, the behaviors depicted in scenarios one and two also define prescription drug misuse. It's often the case that people misusing are not doing it on purpose. They might misuse to manage stress or to manage an existing medical condition. Not taking your prescriptions as instructed by a healthcare professional or perhaps Sharing your prescription medication with others, even if your intention is to help that individual, is just as dangerous. Therefore, we define prescription drug misuse as engaging in three key behaviors. Taking more of a prescription medication than prescribed, taking a prescription medication for a reason different than prescribed, and sharing or taking someone else's prescription medication. And as we noted on the previous slide, regardless of our intentions or reasons, engaging in any of these behaviors is misuse. Unfortunately, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC, now calls this problem an epidemic. Research indicates that millions of Americans misuse prescription drugs by taking them differently than prescribed intendedly, and thousands do it for the first time every day. 
Prescription drugs are among the most misused substances in the United States, more than all illicit street drugs combined except marijuana. The most commonly misused prescription drugs include opioid pain medications like Vicodin and Oxycontin, sedatives such as Xanax and Volume, and stimulants like Adderall and Ritalin. This epidemic affects all of us. There is no stereotypical type of person susceptible to prescription drug misuse. Prescription drug misuse occurs from the very young through the very old. It occurs in rural and suburban communities among those of all socioeconomic status. This is not a youth issue. These risks apply to everyone, including adults. 6.5 million Americans aged 12 and older reported misusing a prescription medication in the past month. Why is our community vulnerable to the misuse of prescription drugs? We believe several factors fuel the misuse of prescription drugs. First, as we discussed earlier, we are Generation Rx. All of us from the very young to the very old, we are a drug-taking society and the use of medications has become normalized in our culture. Second, because we are using medications at unprecedented rates, they are relatively easy to obtain without a prescription. In fact, data from the National Survey on Drug Use and Health demonstrates that the majority of individuals that misuse a prescription drug get them from family members or friends. Third, there are many misperceptions surrounding the legality and safety of prescription drugs. For example, many of us don't realize that it is illegal and considered a felony offense for the types of medications which are most misused to provide any prescription drug to another person without a legitimate prescription. Unfortunately, many individuals do not understand these dangers and thus don't recognize that the misuse of many prescription drugs can be just as dangerous as using illicit street drugs. The number of prescriptions written by doctors has escalated, especially that for prescription opioids. In 2012, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention reported that physicians wrote over 250 million prescriptions for opioid medications. We are only one of two countries, the other is New Zealand, that permit direct-to-consumer advertisements for prescription medications. These advertisements fuel our false beliefs that medications provide quick fixes to everyday problems. Referencing back to misperceptions, misperceptions also exist regarding the dangers of mixing prescription medications with alcohol. Many overdoses result from mixing prescription medications with other alcohol or other drugs. Like adults, many youth misuse prescription medications to deal with various pressures they experience. Pressures may include managing daily stress and anxiety, or perhaps pressure to perform at a high level either in athletics or in academics. In some situations, healthcare professionals may not be educating patients on the safe use of the medications prescribed to them following a surgery or treatment of a medical condition. This lack of education can lead to misuse. We've identified the factors that fuel this problem, but how does the misuse of prescription drugs impact our community? Take a few seconds to discuss this question. We believe the misuse of prescription drugs has serious legal, social, and health consequences. In the previous slide, we discussed how federal law prohibits the possession of a prescription drug without a written prescription. Many of the prescription drugs which are most misused are called controlled substances. For example, Vicodin, Oxycontin, Volume, Xanax, Adderall, and Ritalin, indicating there are even stricter prescribing and dispensing regulations for their use. The misuse of medications can affect our family and friends, our job, our education, our finances, and much more. Reports published in 2011 indicated that in 2007, the annual cost of prescription opioid misuse to the U.S. economy was close to $53 billion per year, with $42 billion in lost workplace productivity, 
$8.2 billion to criminal justice costs, $2.2 billion to drug abuse treatment, and $944 million to medical complications. The most tragic consequence of prescription drug misuse affect our health, including drug overdose deaths, which is the leading cause of accidental death in the United States. Death isn't the only health-related consequence. Due to a high misuse and addiction potential for certain prescription drugs, like opioid pain medications, emergency department visits and drug addiction treatment emissions relating to medication misuse have both escalated. Drug addiction to prescription opioid pain medications account for over 15% of the approximate 1 million drug treatment emissions each year. This has increased from under 5% in 2002. In 2011, approximately 2.5 million emergency department visits in the U.S. were due to drug misuse, including over 1.4 million visits related to the misuse of prescription drugs. Not taking your prescription as directed by a healthcare professional can result in immediate negative effects, including poor prescription opioid pain medications, drowsiness, confusion, sedation, and slowed breathing, for prescription sedatives, decreased heart rate and blood pressure, impaired coordination and judgment, confusion, sedation, slowed breathing, and for prescription stimulants, increased heart rate and blood pressure, irregular heartbeat, nervousness, and insomnia. Lastly, many experts attribute the recent rise in deaths resulting from heroin overdoses to the misuse of prescription drugs. In fact, recent research indicates that three out of four heroin users first reported misusing prescription opioid pain medications, which exhibit identical effects to heroin in the body, thus remain a cheaper, more accessible alternative. The good news is that you can make a difference. Prescription drug misuse can be prevented, and prevention starts with you. How can you prevent prescription drug misuse at your home or in your community? Discuss this question with those around you. We can stop this epidemic by following four key safe medication practices, which we will discuss in more detail on the following slides. First, only use prescription medications as directed by a healthcare professional. Many overdoses result from mixing prescription drugs with other medications or alcohol. Never mix medications with alcohol. If you are taking more than one prescription medication, consult your pharmacist first to ensure this combination is safe. Follow the dosing instructions prescribed by your doctor. These instructions are intentional to help avoid negative effects. Talk with your doctor or pharmacist if you feel your medication needs adjusted. Second, never share your prescription medications with others or use someone else's prescription medication. Many factors determine how we respond to medication, our genetics, weight, and pre-existing medical conditions, amongst others. Therefore, individuals can respond to the same medication differently. Engaging in behaviors or self-diagnosis of self-prescribing is dangerous. Always report any health concerns to a healthcare professional. Regardless of intention, sharing or taking someone else's medication is not safe. Only use medications under the guidance of a healthcare professional. Third, keep your medications secure through the safe storage and disposal practices. First, we'll discuss storage. How do you safely store medications? Talk about this with your peers. When prescribed a prescription medication, store medications in secure locations such as lockboxes, medication safes, or other lockable spaces. Avoid storage places where children and others can easily access, such as drawers, nightstands, or kitchen counters or cabinets. Recall that most people who misuse prescription drugs get them from family members or friends. Next, we'll discuss disposal. Once finished with a prescription medication, you'll have three options for safely disposing a medication. Option one, place the medication in a drug drop box. To find a drop box in your area, visit 
rxdrugdropbox.org. Option two, you can take advantage of community drug take back programs that allow the public to bring unused drugs to a central location for proper disposal. Call your local law enforcement agency or ask your pharmacist to see if a take back program is available in your community. If there is not a drug drop box or take back program near you, there's a third option that allows for safe disposal at home. Before completing these steps, we encourage you to follow any disposal instructions on the drugs label or patient information sheet. If disposal instructions are not given, complete these three steps. Step one, remove the pills from the original container and mix them with an undesirable substance such as used coffee grounds or kitty litter. Step two, throw away the sealed mixture into the trash. Step three, remove the prescription label and dispose of the empty bottle. In general, you should not flush medications down the toilet. However, the FDA still recommends that certain drugs should be disposed by flushing. For a list, visit www.fda.gov. Lastly, be a good example to those around you by modeling these safe medication taking practices. When appropriate, discuss the dangers of misusing prescription drugs with your family, friends, colleagues, students, or patients. We also encourage you to take action and share these messages with your family and community. How can you do this? You can take action at home by discussing these safe medication practices with your family as well as modeling these safe behaviors. You can take action in your community by educating others about this issue as well as safe medication practices. Visit our website, generationrx.org, to access free, ready-to-use resources designed to educate people of all ages in your community. These resources provide an opportunity for you to present this program to other adults or present similar educational programs to other audiences using age-appropriate resources. Lastly, share your experiences. Consider submitting your tips and personal experiences about how to advocate safe medication practices at home or in your community. To do this, visit the contact section of generationrx.org. In this same section, you can also submit any questions you may have regarding how to use these educational resources. Before we end, we do encourage you to take a survey evaluating today's program. You can find a link to this survey in the email provided. Thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoyed this presentation.